Well, hey, everybody, Mike Griffith here. I'm in the office of Georgia basketball coach Mike White. Coach White, obviously, taking the job and uh, getting busy, getting after it, you know, seeing some guys uh, coming and going. Uh, how have things yeah. gone so far? Where are you at in your offseason program? I feel like we're about, you know, where we need to be. It's been a blur these past two or three months. Um, in certain ways, it feels like it's only been a couple of weeks. In certain ways, it feels like it's been a few years, right? Um, got a lot done, though. I, I love our staff. Um, our support staff's terrific. Uh, I really like the guys that we inherited, you know, from, from Coach Crane and, and the previous staff, uh, led by Kerry Oquendo, leading returning scorer in our league. Braylon Bridges, one of the best returning bigs in our league. Uh, Jalen Ingram's trying to get healthy. Jabri Abdul Rahim and Jackson Etter are, are improving daily and working their butts off. Uh, got a lot done in the portal. Uh, six guys out of the portal that we're, we're really high on. Uh, as young people um, that that, uh, that won some games, um, and then we've got a, a talented freshman that's coming too from Texas. That we're really excited about. Yeah, it's a great start. You know, when we look at where George has been and where George is trying to get. You know, mm -hmm. you come from a program that uh, had won a couple of national championships. So I think he replaced his names on the court. No pressure there. Uh, <laughs> but that NCAA tournament yeah. experience. Uh, what did you learn about coaching in the SEC yep. from Florida? What do you think you can bring here? from that experience coaching the Gators? Well, definitely feel a lot more comfortable on, on day one taking this job uh, than I did uh, in, in day one of the previous job. Sure. And, and especially a lot more comfortable than day one in, in the first job at, at Louisiana <laughs> Tech, of course. You know, every day is about growth, and that's our daily goal uh, at the University of Georgia in this basketball program. Our season goal is to max out. Program goal is to win a national championship one day. Um, but how do you do that? You, you max out as a team and you get better every day. Uh, today, uh, we put that, that, that pressure word, we put pressure on ourselves daily. I, uh, no one's gonna put more pressure on me than myself. And um, you know, our three individual workouts today were, were the Super Bowls. Uh, they were huge for us and, and tomorrow's gonna be the same way. Right, you mentioned some of the newcomers and I, I go down the list and uh, you know I don't know where to start and where to end, but, but clearly one of the things that Georgia had lacked was size. You were able yep. to check that box. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about some of the incoming guys? Sure. You know, the, the, uh, the Braylon Bridges is, is one of the better bigs in our league, especially yeah. offensively. He's a handful with a skill level. Uh, right hand, left hand, of course, can drive it, can really pass it to an underrated passer in our league. Um, but he's got a little bit of help now, uh, you know, with, with uh, Frank Anselm from Syracuse, a guy that didn't get a lot of opportunity for a couple of years. Due to an injury or two at Syracuse, he finished the season really strong individually. Had a couple 15 rebounding games, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Matthew Alexander Moncrief, uh, Kyron Lindsey. We got to get Jalen Ingram healthy. We've got four healthy bodies up front. We could play some small ball with a couple of our bigger wings, uh, if need be, right now. And, and maybe that's the way you go because that's that's our best version. We'll find that out. But we've gotten deeper, um, but we'd like to continue to get deeper, really, at every spot. Yeah, we know that uh, in football, Coach Kirby Smart was a, a former player who had some success at Georgia and mm -hmm. was a team captain. And you had a lot of success at Ole Miss. I believe you were part of what was it the first Ole Miss team to go to the NCAA tournament, if I'm not mistaken. First three at larges in school history in the first NCAA tournament uh, win. I, I actually had the opportunity to dribble the clock out and, and almost turn it over, but I didn't. Thank <laughs> God. Uh, but I was also uh, had front row seats with the Bryce Drew Valparaiso shot. So we had our ups and downs there, but a great group of guys who we keep in contact with. I was very much a role guy. Pass it to good players, run to the corner, get out of their way, follow out, hope they don't call them all. Uh, but a great experience, obviously, that, that catapulted all of us uh, to um, to careers and, and, and productive families and led by a guy named Rob Evans, who's my lifetime mentor outside of my two parents. A picture of him sitting over there on the shelf, of course, who meant a great deal to all of us. Now, so uh, the, the, the common thread here is you went into a place that had not had uh, a great deal of postseason success. And much like Georgia has, mm -hmm. has kind of been down. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Coach Crean, you know, had some some ups with some big wins, but yeah. wasn't able to sustain it. Uh, injuries. Uh, we've talked yep. about the difficulties in the SEC. Uh, you know, Coach Fox, uh, Georgia, an outstanding defensive club, all, yep. always tough, but you know, never really you know hit that high peak, high level peak. Um, what are some things that maybe from your playing experience and from mm -hmm. your coaching experience that maybe can take Georgia to that next level that that seems like it's been so elusive for quite some time 
there's so many guys that have been here that are high level coaches, including the two that, that you just mentioned. You, you talk about all the success that, that they've had throughout their careers. You know, Coach Green went to a Final Four, right? I mean, in, in year two, they were really, really good knocking on the door, of course, and, and Ant leaves after one and COVID hits and, and injuries and all those type things. And Coach Fox, year in and year out, was as competitive uh, as, as hard nosed in terms of the physicality that they, uh, that they represent on the glass and defensively um, and then you, 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 to go back further than that I'd be wasting people's time but there was there was also other coaches of course that had huge years or, or a huge couple years um, and and our goal as as a staff and coming here with all the potential here at this at this place um, is to get it going and obviously to maintain it and and we want to be here um, this is a destination for me and for our staff uh, this athletic department is is off the charts with this with the success the uh, the academic prowess of this institution Athens as a place to live this place we all know everyone in college basketball knows this place has a lot of promise we're excited about being here obviously the experience in this league at this level uh, certainly can only help us uh, but there's a lot of improvement to to, uh, to be made yeah, no doubt. And, and quickly, you know, one of the things I talked with Coach White about a little bit earlier, and certainly Georgia fans know this just watching the SEC. I mean, and Coach White will tell you this, this isn't the same SEC that you played mm -hmm. in in the 1990s. I mean, this sure. league, as you put into perspective, has gone from a two- or a three-bid league to a eight- or a nine-bid league yeah. annually. How do you compete against some of these other top-level programs? I mean, my goodness, Coach, they're driving Porsches at Kentucky with NIL deals. I mean, they put yeah. a lot into that program. Rick Barnes at Tennessee is probably a first ballot Hall of Famer, and, and, mm -hmm. and Florida's got a lot of tradition. I did see their coach. I, I said, well, that's nice. They brought a player down here. They said, no, that's actually the new coach. He's a, <laughs> a little young there, but, but Florida, yeah. nonetheless, was some tradition. How do you yeah. compete against the likes of Bruce Pearl and what he's done at Auburn? How do you yeah. compete against that at a program that, that maybe – um, doesn't have the largest arena that maybe doesn't have the richest NIL offers in place. Sure, sure. It's been done at other places. It, 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 it just has. It's, it's, it's being done consistently at, at some of the elite mid-major programs in the country, right, that have, that have turned themselves into programs that uh, have elite levels of exposure. Um, I'm forgetting a couple high majors that have had huge years over the past couple years. Baylor does come to mind, though. I mean, what was Baylor 10 years ago or 15, 20 years ago? What's the the history at that place compared to this place? There, there, there's there's a lot of places that have had a ton of success in the past few years or the past 10 years that have a, a, a comparable history or even not as much a history as the University of Georgia. Uh, I think first and foremost, we're not going to make any excuses, period. I mean, we... We, um, we're going to do the best we can do every day. We're going to target the right type people. We're going to sign the guys who we're supposed to get. We're going to skill develop. We're going to have uh, an accountable program in terms of, of, of defense and rebounding. We're going to get better offensively. We're going to figure out how to max out. Uh, and we're going to build it. We're going to recruit this state as hard as any program in the country. Uh, but get the guys again who we're supposed to get. We'll figure out who those, who those young men are. Um, we have a ton to sell here. We, we do, again, academics in Athens and uh, the facilities and, and resources and, and, and the weather uh, and the, the, the fertility of this recruiting base is second to none. The AU programs in this state are the best in the country. The high school coaches in this state are the best in the country. And Georgia basketball is going to get going. Yeah, no doubt. I can tell that Coach White's uh, fired up about this job. And, you know, when, when you took this job, I, I think it caught some a uh, little bit by surprise. Uh, you know, you'd had some success at Florida. You'd had a run of, of NCAA tournament appearances there. Um, and yet, Josh Brooks was able to bring you in. I got to yeah. ask you about Josh. You know, Josh, an athletic director, and you're no stranger to ADs. You got a lot of them in your family. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about Josh, and how important was Josh Brooks in the process mm -hmm. of getting you up here to Georgia? Really important. His reputation as a human being, as an administrator, um, his relationship uh, with uh people that are very close with me, one being Danny, uh, my, my brother, um, he was big. He, he, he was big. Now, uh, Scott Strickland, the AD that I left at the yeah. University of Florida, I'm very, very close with. Yeah. Uh, great athletic director in his own right. Tom McClellan, Bruce Vandevelde, the administrators that I work with at Louisiana Tech, unbelievable human beings and administrators. I've been very, very blessed. Josh is no different. He happens to be the, the best AD in the league. I would say Scott two, Danny White third, uh, <laughs> but um, 
great president Jerry Moorhead. You can you can feel the support from um, John Bateman, uh, Darius. I mean, we, we've got uh, Mike Mobley who's sitting right next to us, of course, the best SID in the country. Uh, we've just we've got a, a lot of support here, uh, led by Josh Brooks and the culture that he's created, which is why every sport on this campus is winning. Yeah, I was going to ask you about your your, you know, your brother being the, the AD at Tennessee and coming from a family with a lot of administrators. And you yeah. get a sister at SMU as well. Is what's the value to that? I know your, your focus is basketball. The people are watching, like, hey, we just want them to win games. But sure, this this job now with with NIL, with one time transfer, with all the CEO like responsibilities that we see from head coaches, mm -hmm. how much of an advantage do you think that is? And, and what are some of the things that maybe you, you, you gain just organically from the conversations with your family members? Yeah, a lot of it is organically, as, as we talked about, uh, Mike. You know, it, it, sometimes you're, you, get, you hang up with one of your, your brothers or your sister or my father, and a 20 minute conversation really just called to check on one another. Uh, and you find out that you got three or four nuggets that you didn't even realize that you were going to ask for uh, or receive during that conversation. And I like to think I'm giving them something, but I know they're definitely giving me a lot right. uh, as administrators. So we lean on each other, uh, emotional support as much as anything, exchanging ideas, checking on one another. Um, you know, it's a it, it's a unique family dynamic to complement the the work uh, dynamic, of course. And again, just really blessed. One of the things that we have seen in the last few years come out of Georgia, I know everybody's proud of, uh, of the Ant-Man. You know, oh, Anthony absolutely. Edwards, a fantastic yeah. uh, rising uh, NBA star. I was going to ask you uh, about the value of that. Now, Ant was only here one year, and unfortunately COVID ended the year uh, before they were able to finish. They actually beat your alma mater. They had just started the SEC tournament, got a win, in, and yeah. who knows where Georgia would have finished that particular year. They, they looked like they were going to get hot in that tournament. But sure. what's the value uh, of having an Anthony Ant-Man? Edwards in the NBA as far mm -hmm. as the visibility it gives Georgia and, and maybe the the path that it that shows maybe some of the kids out of Atlanta that this could be an option yeah I, I don't I haven't even had an opportunity to meet Ant other than, than the handshake lines right um, when when playing the Bulldogs a couple of years ago but I don't think he has any idea how important he is to this program uh, moving forward and, and really since he's been here since, since he stepped foot on campus uh, we We've used his name in, in some of yeah. his videos you know, throughout the entire spring. I mean, his name was brought up um, pretty much throughout every recruitment of every guy that we signed and will continue to be brought up. He's a guy that recruits admire and watch yeah. closely and, and like, and someone will continue to sell. Uh, Bulldog Nation is very proud of him. Yeah, dynamic player, and certainly we've seen some dynamic times here. I guess I would just ask you, you've been here as an opposing coach, and just your your thought on the stag and, and what we might see this season in terms of the environment and uh, yeah. the energy. I've been in here uh, at times when it's really, really loud. Fortunately, we've had some success in here uh, where we've been able to keep the crowd somewhat somewhat quiet, but uh, you'd hope that we're on the other end of that, of course. Uh, okay. We're going to be sitting in different seats. Um, we've got to put a product out there that people are, are proud about. Um, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Uh, we, we challenge our fans to, to show up and, and to have themselves in seats to bring friends uh, with you, to bring families. But at the same time, we're going to challenge ourselves to put the best product we can out there and to be our best version and to win and be exciting to watch and to play really, really hard, play for one another. And we're going to do that. And we're going to build it together with our fans um, I'll never forget watching right before we tipped at Florida, I want to say early February, making the date up, but the Auburn game at home. Uh, uh, Auburn versus Georgia in Stegman this year. Mm -hmm. Georgia having a very, very tough year. Auburn having an unbelievable year. And it was packed and it was rocking. Um, we got to get to a point where it's like that every game. Yeah, well, you got Jackson Etter back. That's one guy. He darn near won that game himself in the final <laughs> minute. You mentioned might have led the league in uh, charges taken. A lot of these guys yeah. uh, showed some gutsy effort. Coach White, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for Coach White, this is Mike Griffith. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's On the Beat episode.